Today's freedom interview is with one of the most brilliant men I've ever met named James Hopkins, who's put together some absolutely brilliant technology all about healing and vibration and harmonics. And uh, joining me again is, is the beautiful and lovely Ray Camille. And uh, well, I guess let's just get right into it. Hey, Jamie, how you doing? Awesome. Great to see you guys. It's good to see you, too. Good to see you, too. Where are you at right now? I'm in Los Angeles, sunny California. It's a good place to be. Same place you were the, the last time we met. <laughs> Indeed, last time I saw you, you were in this beautiful home, and uh, and uh, it's just great to see you again. Mm. So, uh, you know, I, I'd love it if we could we could start off by, uh, if, if you could tell us a little bit about what it is that you do. Sure, yeah, I, I feel like I should probably uh, begin with one of the first events in my life that profoundly influenced me to where I am today and that was when I was 14 years old and I thought I was going to be an artist you know uh, but I, I, I crashed on a motorcycle and I hit my head and I was paralyzed on the left side and I couldn't speak and it was really horrible it was a very traumatic incident and all the traditional medical doctors said that nothing could be done and learn to live with this condition and you know, I bought into that because I hadn't heard any other viewpoint. And my grandmother came out from Europe and she dragged me to this old chiropractor when I was 15, no, 14 years old. And uh, he fixed me in a week, uh, you know, for like $2 a treatment. And, and uh, you know, this was my first kind of lesson in question authority because the best said nothing could be done, learn to live with it. And this quote quack because back then chiropractors weren't cool or alternative. They were they were quacks. This doctor spent time in jail for being a chiropractor, and and so the quack fixed me in a week. So it was like well, it taught me to dig deep for uh, beyond the status quo for you know information and truths and various ways to approach the problem. It also taught me that through every traumatic experience is a gift because. Uh, I found my purpose, you know, it was, it was almost like spirit was tapping me on the shoulder and going, you know, you're in the healing arts. And, and, uh, I, I didn't know what he did or how, but I knew that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to help other people. I thought he was a miracle worker and he would, he would break it down to super basics and just look, anyone can learn how to do this. And so, um, you know, I found my purpose and my calling at a very young age and it wouldn't have happened without this horrible crash. And, uh, and so that put me on the path toward the healing arts, you know, at a very young age and, and studying alternative approaches and philosophies and, and alternative health practices uh, uh, that at that time were a little weird. You know, now it's almost uh, mainstream in a way, you know. Uh, there was no evidence at that time to suggest in my own lifetime that chiropractic would become the second largest healthcare profession in the United States. So. Uh, not only did I find what I want to do at a young age and, 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 and love what I did, but I ended up having like a really huge successful practice in Studio City, you know, lots of celebrities. That was just, I loved my life. I had 6,000 active clients at any moment for like a quarter of a century. And then another really traumatic experience happened when I was, this is about 12 years ago, starting with severe arthritis in my hands, my hands just curled up in a claw, I couldn't open my hands and, and, and you know, nature said, you're out of the game. It was like losing my career instantly with no notice and that was just the beginning of a series of losses that were very substantial starting with my health and, you know, my, my purpose in life and I lost, you know, all the clients that I had cultivated for so many years and, uh, you know, I, lo I lost the income associated with that. I lost the house that I lived in 18 years. And, four dogs died and my mentor took his last breath and in my arms from leukemia and and then a piece of fiberglass got in the engine of my car i was breathing it for six months without knowing i went into complete respiratory failure almost died and and you know all, all of this happened in less than a year and I, you know, it was brutal and and i just knew that this was sort of like an initiation because of you know many past experiences and i and because this one was so brutal i i thought well you know every every the larger the obstacle the greater the blessing so i i felt like this something huge in this for me and i just surrendered to the process it took years 
you know, and, and believing that there is a blessing when a traumatic incident is occurring may not take all the suffering and pain away, but it, it takes you out of the posture of a victim and places you in the posture of listening for the purpose. Like, why is this happening? And it, and it, and it postures you for the miracle, for the blessing in store. And, and you, you know, it's like planting a seed. You don't plant a seed and come back next day to look for a tree, you know, it may take years, but you constantly nurture that and you water it and love it. And, and you're patient with it. And eventually without question, you'll find the blessing. And that's that. And in that process, it took many years, but that's how I came across what I'm doing now. Wow. Wow. So I have a few questions, but uh, what are you doing now? <laughs> <laughs> when everything went away, you know, all the things that I used to formally identify myself with were removed, like what I did, where I lived, etc. Um, I just went deep into my meditations and yoga and just started reading because I never had time to read. I was so busy with my, my practice and I read, yeah, I came across the life of Pythagoras mm. and, and something happened. It just, I, I, it, it sparked some ancient cellular DNA memory or something. And I just, the more I read about, uh, his life and influences, the more I had to know. And, you know, I just started Googling. I, I read hundreds of books and it just, it just, I was basically just following an intense fascination, having no idea that this was going anywhere. But, you know, we all know him as the father of math and music in the Western world. Uh, you know, he's also, you know, when he applied music as medicine, he used to heal through sound and, and he got that in Egypt. He was the first and only Westerner to be initiated in the Egyptian temples. Well documented, he spent 23 years and he brought that wisdom to the West. So he's that connection and uh, healing through sound and vibration, harmonics and music, just because I've always been in the healing arts, it, it, it spoke to me. I just inquired, what does that mean? What does this mean? Heal through sound and vibration, and music. And, and I just went down that rabbit hole for years, started getting ideas to create a series of musical instruments based on Pythagorean mathematics that generate overtone sequences that put people in altered states to help drop that mind-body paradigm, move you into spirit, you know, or what Pythagoras would say, your true divine nature. You know, if we're not our bodies and our minds, you know, our bodies age and die and our minds chatter away, then, then what are we really, you know? So these instruments facilitate that. That's what I'm doing now. And you've seen the instruments, you know, they're beautiful and profound. It's kind of like one of them is like lying in a massive seven foot cello with hundreds of strings on it. And, and I cover your eyes and your body with blankets. It's not performance art, it's inner journeying. And, and you not only have the audible experience, but you feel the harmonics because you're physically connected to the resonant chamber. And uh, so you, you just sink into the universal sea of divine harmonics, you know, you it transcends language and belief systems and any enculturation. Or... Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask too, I mean, is this something that you do for people? Can people actually come to you and, and schedule an appointment to, to experience this? Yes, yeah, this is what I do. You know, I'm very low key about it. I don't advertise or promote ever. Uh, I, I just wait till, you know, either word of mouth or people somehow come across it and feel really like a connection with what it is they don't know why or what I'm doing but they know they've got to do it and I then then that that's my tribe you know that's yeah. mm -hmm. that's how people come to me I no. uh, that been told not to advertise so what would you, would you even do interviews but I love what you and Jordan are doing so much and I feel so aligned with your purpose and all your good intentions it's, you know spirit was like a clear yes so yeah, I only see one person a day in the evenings, and I and I wait for those people to just introduce themselves. I'm really excited to come down and experience what because Jordan Jordan has done it already. I know, and I'm <laughs> I'm really interested in coming down and experiencing that too because we have a, a, a really kind of a shared understanding. I think in that something that you had said earlier about you know kind of the existing medical paradigm and the way it, the way it's designed you know i know that i know a lot of doctors and, and chiropractors too and 
I remember the days when chiropractors were considered, you know, hucksters. They were, they were fringe medicine. And what, I think it took 20 years for an insurance company to even say that they would pay for a, a, a chiropractic visit. And even now they place ridiculous limitations on how many times you can even go see your chiropractor based off, you know, how much they'll pay for it. When I've had, I had a similar experience than you did. I had a horse, horse accident um, a number of years ago. I used to do some jousting at Renaissance fairs and um, I ended up on the ground and having a little fight with a, a, a 17 hand horse, which he kind of won. Uh, you know, they're big, so. <laughs> and I mean, I was in bed for, boy, a long time. And it wasn't until I, my, you know, my mom came in and said, look, these doctors don't know what the world they're talking about. These muscle relaxers and lying in bed is gonna kill you. So I want you to, you know, I've, I made an appointment to go see a chiropractor and an acupuncturist. And in a week, I was up and walking around. Now I was still in pain, but you know, in a week I was up and, and, and walking around and um, you know, here we are with that same kind of story of if I would have went with the existing medical paradigm, um, you know, I don't know what would have happened to me, but I went into something that was more in line with, you know, an energy healing, more in line with a vibration, more in line with, I remember my acupuncturist, this wonderful gal, you know, I wanted to talk about it and she said, we don't talk about it. We just do it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we just we just do it. She's I'm like, well, in the yeah, she's like, I'm like, well, you know, I want to know why this works. And she says, because it does. And that's it. Right there. So it was, it was really powerful. But something else that you also mentioned, too, was I wanted to ask you about was, you know, you go through this seemingly, you know, uh, it, it, it almost seems like it's a conspiracy against you in your life. Right. You said four dogs and then, you know, a piece of fiberglass in the engine. How does that happen? And then, you know, all of these things that happen, the arthritis and everything all in the same year. It sometimes it almost seems like this grand conspiracy to ruin your entire life. Right. Well, it's interesting you say that because it, it is it is a conspiracy. Times are going to come in our event where events in our lives where we're going to be tested to the bone. It is an initiation and it's something we agreed to somewhere long ago or it's a result of decisions that we've made along our path that have culminated in a series of events that challenge us to the bone. And if we realize that we're initiates on the path toward illumination, then we realize that this is just a test, it's an illusion, and, and this is an opportunity to turn it into the greatest blessing imaginable. And that's what's happening. And it's all a choice, it's all a point of view. You know, there's no right or wrong, you know, but you know, would you rather be a victim or would you rather be, you know, an initiate under a test to move you to your next highest purpose in your life, you know? So it, the, I think the choice is, is obvious what best answer there is, you know. And I just like, you know, to give people hope that are suffering that, you know, there's a reason for it. And don't lose faith and look for why this is happening. Just ask. You know, you don't have to know why or how you're gonna solve this problem. It could it could appear it appears insurmountable. I have a term for it. I call it the illusion of insurmountable loss. Mm. People who are suffering from uh, a series of losses, they're so substantial, they don't know if they're going to survive it. And, and maybe they're not, you know, maybe they've been diagnosed with a terminal condition and they've been given six months to get their affairs in order. This is a blessing too, you know, because it's also another initiation because the, you know, the soul is eternal and, you know, you can tune into the fear and the horror of it all because that's there. Or you can tune into this tremendous profound miracle of life and know that every end is a beginning and wonder what's next you know and get ready for the next because it's going to be awesome mm -hmm. yeah and just move into that you know just posture yourself for the awesome yeah and uh so uh you know we're all in the same boat all of us yeah. man and no matter where you're at you know you're going to get new challenges and it's just another opportunity to take it to a higher level there's something else that you said that I thought was very, very, very profound, and you glossed over it very quickly. I know you know how, how important it is. You said you were 14, maybe 15 years old, and you said, because I didn't, I didn't know anything different. And you, you know, I, I went with the existing medical 
paradigm. I went, I, I went to the doctors because that's what I thought I was supposed to do. In fact, I didn't know there was anything different. And it wasn't until there was an exploration. And it wasn't even exploration on my part. It was exploration on someone who cared dearly about me, said, look, he's not able to solve this problem by himself. I'm gonna go get some more new information and then shared that new information with me. Now, I was the one who was willing to look at that new information, and it could have been that I was, you know, it, it, it had that thing that you were talking about, that fear of insurmountable loss that I figured, and this is part of the blessing, in my opinion, of the insurmountable loss, is we go to that space when we feel that way of, well, what do I have to lose? Love it, yes. And so, I tried something that, you know, the other doctors told me, Oh, acupuncture is a waste of time. Chiropractic is a waste of time. Don't don't even waste your time doing it, right? Or your money. And yet here, I hear you, heard you say one of the same things that I felt, which was, I didn't know anything different. And as soon as I did, as soon as someone who cared enough about me presented another option, and I was willing to take it, look what happened. It, it I moved. Yes. I moved into the next. The same thing happened to you. I I would love to hear, kind of, tell me some more about that. It's true, you know, I, I mean, I never even heard the word chiropractor before, you know. To me, it was just another white-haired guy in a white coat, you know. Once something like that happens, where a solution comes from somewhere you never heard of or thought of or were aware of, all, and then you realize there are actually infinite other possibilities, it, it, it opens you up to studying, you just become open, you become more open. Oh my God, what else don't I know about, mm -hmm. you know? And, and one of the things that, uh, as a result of that, that I'm inclined to share is, is that, you know, when I finally became a chiropractor, you know, like, I don't want people to think that, like, I have anything against the medical profession because they have a lot to offer too. And, and as a chiropractor for 25 years, I, I had so many clients and they'd have all kinds of problems. And, and I had this black book, I was famous for the black book you know, and I had every medical specialty you could think of, OBGYNs, you know, name it, you know, neurologists. And, yeah. and so as people came with serious problems that were outside of my scope, I had a legal, moral, and ethical obligation to care for that patient. I would go into this black book and send them to the best, you know, I researched the best of each specialty. So I felt really confident when I sent you to this guy, you're in the best hands, you know, in the medical world. But I, and I must have sent tens of thousands of patients to medical doctors. Not once in my entire career did a medical doctor ever send one patient to me, ever. So it's bizarre, you know, it's really bizarre that they, they, the AMA trains these doctors to not accept any alternatives, you know, so they only know what they're taught. And, I, you know, I think that's, that's really important to mention too, because, you know, um, when, when I say, or even when, when you say, or when we talk in general about the medical establishment of the medical paradigm, it's not specific doctors that we're talking about. It's the education system and yeah. the structure that's been formulated around the medical. I mean, there are rules in place for medical doctors where they're restricted on actually doing things that could really help their patients. And it's not their fault either. It's, totally. you know, it's, it's like, it's like if, even if you work for an insurance company and you really care about people, and you want to be able to allow the, the, the resources for someone to see a particular, and you're bound by the rules that say, no, you can't. This is, the, this is the rule that says we can do this. And it's really inspiring to me to hear, you know, first that the, the same kind of thing happens over and over and over again, where someone experiences something, they experience something that made a tremendous difference in their life, and then they jump into that in service of other people. You know, a chiropractor, brought you to a, to a space of renewed health, and then you become a chiropractor. How beautiful is that? And you know, the same thing in, in the space of what we're creating here with Panic to Freedom is, I suffered from debilitating panic and anxiety, and here after finding a solution, after finding something that worked, I'm like, I got to share this with other people. I feel as if I have a moral, ethical, you know, duty, a responsibility to say, I found this, and I've got to share this with someone else. It's Beautiful. It, it's it's important, you know. And and so I I do want to make sure that people uh, understand 
that there are doctors and uh, out there who are absolutely fantastic people who you know who come from a, a, a wonderful space of giving and when you find a doctor like that keep them yeah and, and, and it makes me want to share one other really interesting thing about uh, you know the terminology that's used in our culture uh, you know for instance medical doctors you know they call themselves you know traditional medicine and everything else is alternative you know and and you th if you think about it, if you look in the dictionary the definition of traditional and it mean and it and it means having been around for a really long time and the things that the medical profession have relegated to alternative those are the arts and sciences that have been around for five, six, seven, th ten, th as long as humans have been around. You know, <laughs> herbology, you know, massage, chiropractic, acupuncture, sound healing. These are ancient traditions, you know, but they call themselves, you know, medical world's been here a few hundred years and they're the tradition. They're brilliant the way they flip it. You know, so yeah, people yeah. just need to really think. That's a, that's a really good point, right? I mean, <laughs> massage has been around since the beginning of of you know written history and, uh, and, and but yet it's it's alternative right <laughs> it is brilliant and it's not an accident that it went that way no These guys sit around big tables and come up with terms to brainwash people and they <laughs> never really question you know what they're even the words they're using or the, the meaning behind those words yeah it's true yeah. so it's true. yeah you know i uh I, I was wondering you know you, you were telling us about how you know, just one thing after another, everything just started breaking down and breaking down and then arthritis and then the, you were kind of in this really, um, well, for lack of a better word, god awful space. And, oh. and, and I was wondering if you could maybe describe as well what it was that kind of, you know, there's, there's like a transition point you hit, you keep going, you know, down, 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 and then maybe it all crescendos. And then, yeah. you, you know, that mind shifts. The, the, the mindset kind of shifts and you start moving in a different direction or you start adding something new and I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about what maybe what that was for you and um, and and well I guess more just more in general what, what happened that's a that's a great question yeah the first thing that happens is like you said god awful circumstances you know everything just falls apart to such a degree that uh, it's you're, you're just wiped out you're just wiped out and you are suffering uh, an unbelievable degree and and um, you just don't know you're actually you know you I was praying for death you know like I, you know because I, I mean breathing fiberglass for six months and not being able to breathe is horrible you just I was hoping my la next breath would be my last and I thought I was going to die from exhaustion, from coughing violently alone, you know, for six months. I, you know, sleep deprivation is just horrible. You just want out. You want out of your body and this whole situation that, uh, you know, deliver me from this suffering. And so, yeah, so that's the first stage. And, and then, you know, I just realized, okay, every, if, if it's true that everything happens for a reason and that this is a blessing in disguise, you know, what could that possibly be? You just open up a question and you, you know, it's like, you know, prayer is talking to God, and, but meditation is listening. So we're always asking things of God, you know, so it's okay to ask, but then just be silent and listen, you know, so why did this happen? What do I need to learn from this experience, you know? And then I, I kind of realized in a way, uh, I'm totally free, you know, like, okay, I've been wiped out. So a, a death is like a birth. If, you, if you've lost everything, then that means this is a new unit of time. So if, if I was just born right now and I could do anything I wanted and money didn't matter and what other people thought doesn't matter, what would I like to do, you know? So I wanted to just kind of go deep into my yoga and meditations in my spiritual life and begin to get in touch with the essence of my being, you know, and constantly inquire, you know, sincerely, you know, who am I and what do I need to learn? And just constantly asking that question day after day. And the next thing I decided to do was start reading books that 
might inspire me or give me new points of view and 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 I just started opening up books and and there was no plan to it I just waited till I saw a book that sounded cool and if and if it kept my attention I just followed a passionate current you know I just followed things that were absolutely fascinating to me and and that felt really good you know because it got me out of my you know you know thinking about my problems stuff you know and of course I went out to the desert and I you know I'd fasting and sweats and just you know changing my diet radically and you know just doing everything I could for my health and well-being while I'm cultivating my spiritual life and uh, you know you know it was years a couple of years of that and but then what happened was when I developed this deep fascination with all things Pythagorean I narrowed it to that you know Pythagoreanism and and sound ancient sound healing and and so I still didn't know where this is going I just I call it following a profound fascination till its furthest conclusion you don't have to know where it's going just follow your passion follow the fascination you know if you come across something that makes you go whoa that's your cue stay with that you know keep yeah. looking in that direction and all things affiliated with that you know <laughs> the uh, the inspiration to transcend correct yes yes and that's different for everybody so everybody gets to follow their own fascination you know how cool and 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 so i just you know finally i was thinking about wow if you could if pythagoras created instruments that healed through sound and used certain frequencies and harmonic fields to you know move into the divine truths like how do you how can i do that you know and so that i just you know i got ideas i started reading more books about that i started interviewing instrument makers all over the world uh you know and and getting clear and clear pictures and and i and and you know every once in a while my mind would be like well this is really cool but it's too wacky it's too far out nobody's going to get it uh you know be all alone with in a room with a bunch of cool instruments and then to answer your question what happened was it got to a point where i don't care what anybody thinks i have to do this for myself it just the fascination became so intense it was a breaking point it was like i'm going to make these instruments i don't care how long it takes what i have to go through how much i have to spend i'm going to do this and that was huge you know that that was breaking the dam and nothing could stop it after that and and that so it was two years of thinking about it two years to find instrument makers willing to do this and then another two years to make them once i commissioned them there's six years and it wasn't until they came through customs that i realized i have no idea how to play <laughs> <laughs>